All right, I'm finally getting around to it. I'm gonna be putting uh, backup lights on my Triton ATV trailer. This trailer's identical to a snowmobile trailer, only it's not as wide, but the application is still the same, whether it's ATV or most common snowmobile trailers are still built just like this, only wider. Uh, I did another video previously on a trailer with backup lights. I'll put a link in the description below if you wanna check that out to see the lights that I put on that. They're slim line, they work very well for these applications, but for this trailer, since it's a box uh, aluminum and all the lights in here, the wires are already sealed and hidden, I figured I was gonna go ahead and go with a flush mount light. So, the best thing I found were these. They're a 20 watt LED. They come with the silicone gasket and everything. Um, these lights measure in at four and one quarter inches wide, and they're only two and one quarter deep, and two and one quarter tall. So I measured the, this trailer many times and this type of application of a light was the best one I could find that would fit into, into the trailer for clearance purposes. Uh, they do make a 40 watt um, one of these, but I think it's almost nine inches wide. These are pretty bright lights. They're a, they're a flood pattern. I tested them out, you know, before I'm putting them in here. And I think 20 watts each for each side is Plenty light for this. Um, once I get wired in, I'll show a bunch of uh, different shots at night with it and let you guys see these. There will also be a link in the description below on these lights as well. Um, I got them from Amazon. They really weren't that expensive. I can't remember what I paid for them, but they're a pretty nice high quality light. And like I said, it's nice because you got this gasket to keep all the water and stuff out of the tubes when you put them on. So for this one, just to keep clean line and all the wires hidden, I decided to go with these. Uh, there's a couple different ways you can wire the backup lights. I showed on the other video, I put in a pigtail of a box. I'm not gonna go with that route on this one, so let me show you the different steps you can take. Okay, there's two different ways that you can wire when you put backup lights on a trailer like this. Here's your common, what's going to be on any snowmobile trailer is a four pin, white's your ground, brown's the running lights, yellow's left turn, and the green's the right turn. So I'm still going to use the same colors and wire it up like that, only you have to add an extra wire. So the way you could do that is you could just cut this plug off and you have to get one of these. I got, I'll put in the description below these as well if you want to order them. And don't always go by the colors on these. Uh, I would always use a test light and test it on your vehicle and then make sure that it matches where it says black, green and stuff on here just to, just to make sure. Um, you could hook that in there and then add an extra wire and if you wanted to you could just run the wire on the existing plug to the rear of your trailer and then where it goes into the tube you could just you know put some wire loom over that, make it look nice and you know not have to tape the wire on there to make sure it doesn't fall off. Um, this one I'm doing differently. I had mice get up in the tube. I pulled these out. I was having electrical issues with this trailer and they ate through my wires. So that's what happens when it used to sit out. So there, are, I got some wire at Napa. You can, uh, you can buy this wire. I think it's like 16 gauge. You just need five wires. The same thing, it's the same colors, ground running lights. Uh, left turn, right turn, and then the red will be my backup light. I'm just going to wire this up to the plug, and I'm shooting that wire all the way to the rear of the trailer, and then I'm going to run this to all my uh, marker lights. I have to run this up to the front so I don't splice into this halfway through. I just figured I'd run it to the back and then run that up for my front side markers. So two different ways you can do it. Whatever, I mean, the easiest way is going to be just add a wire, but uh, this is a route you can go to. It's not that expensive buying that by the foot. Just measure what you need, however length your trailer is, and you can do it that way. Let's go to the rear, and I'll show you how I'm going to mount these. All right, at the rear of the trailer. Um, all trailer brands, you know, Triton may vary from different ones. So if you guys do get a flush mount light like this, I, I strongly recommend pull your tail light out. These pop right out and just measure everything inside to see how deep it is, the clearances that you have, and all that before you go buy lights or before you start you know, cutting holes in the frame. 
make sure that none of this stuff goes up in there and there's you know nothing welded in there for structural purposes which I've already had these apart before I bought the lights and, and measured it multiple times before I bought them. On this trailer, I could have went with the, the longer lights, but like I said, I just don't think they're needed. And I think these are gonna look good. They're small, compact, it's gonna be flush mount. Like I said, check the other video I have. You can, you can hang the slim line that will, will fit down right here perfectly. They're a really good light too, if you wanna do it that way, if you don't wanna cut holes in your trailer. but. I just decided to go this route for something different and like I said it's going to keep all my wires hidden and exposed. Nice thing with having this gasket is it makes a good template. I can you know sit this on here I'll draw it out and then I'm going to go ahead and cut the holes. We'll get the lights mounted and then I'll do a bunch of videos at night um, backing up and stuff with this from different angles so that you guys can see it. So all right pulled the the light out and I inspected inside there again like I said just make sure you guys measure in the tube and everything uh, the only thing I saw was an obstruction it was right here was a screw that comes down into here from the decking but it's not going to be a problem because there's no screws up here or anything so I measured it I pretty much just centered it from here to the pocket it was 10 inches I put it right in the middle like I said I used this little silicone gasket they give you um, just as a template and then I'm going to be using a small three inch uh, cutoff tool and I'm just going to cut, you know, around there, drill my holes for my bolts and then we'll wire everything in. But uh, even if I don't cut it big enough, I'm going to try to make it to where it just fits. I can always grind that down and make it fit. I'd rather cut it right at size or a little smaller than, you know, make it too big that, you know, water and stuff will get in there. So let me go ahead and cut these and then... We'll see what they look like mounted. All right, I got the first hole cut. I'm gonna go ahead here with a file and file around everything, make sure it's all smooth, take everything. Uh, looks like found me a mouse nest up in here, which isn't shocking. I just wanted to show you guys, look at these wires, how they ate through them, all that, you know, coating off of there. And... All right, I got the holes cut. I got them in place. Um, I think they look pretty good. They're a good size. All right, before you get started, I just wanted to point out an easy way to, to check these, these plugs. Remove the set screw on the top completely. Open it up very gently, push it in just enough to make it stick. You don't need to put it in the whole way because you're gonna wanna pull that back out. So that's exactly how it's gonna look while it's inside there. I've already determined that that bottom pin on this is the ground. Now I got the marker lights on and the right hand turn signal and I determined that my parking lights or marker lights is, is that pin. The right turn is this one and I already found out before I did this that the left turn is this one. So once I figure out what's what on the plug I can remove it and determine that green on this one is my marker lights and then Brown's right turn, and I believe the red is the left turn. So, nice thing about this, now I know what's what when I go to hook these up to configure it with my wire on my, my pigtail when I do it. So when I run them back to my lights, I'll just take what color wire I hooked up to each one, and when I get it to the rear of the trailer, then it's all set, I know what to plug into my lights, and I should be good to go. A uh, couple minutes, I mean this only took me a minute as you've seen, and sometimes one minute of just doing something like this can save you a lot of headaches uh, trying to figure it out in the long run or just miscellaneous blowing fuses and stuff. Alright, I got my plug all wired up here, everything tightened up. I know every color on my pigtail now, what it's going to be back there, so when I go to hook it up and I decided to use the red wire for my backup lights. So once I get this slid back on and everything buttoned up, I'm going to go around and then start working on the, on the rear of it to get all the wires hooked up. Okay, so I got all the lights wired up, everything back in, um, got these mounted and everything. Everything turned out pretty good, um, can't complain. Uh, tested everything out, it all worked. So here when it gets dark later on, I'll go ahead and do a, a night shot of this to show you guys different angles try to show as much how bright these really are um, one thing i wanted to point out on this though when i mounted these in here 
is these originally came with with bolts for hardware but being in a tube frame like this you can't get behind them to get nuts in so what i did is i used a, a quarter inch sheet metal like bolt like this stainless steel now this isn't the one that i used but they were half inch long one quarter and i drilled and i tapped these so that i could screw them in with these and to hold them in place that way i don't have to put nuts on behind them it sucked it down on there really tight um held them nice uh, the one thing you have to watch out for anytime you're messing with an aluminum trailer is if you use steel hardware um, even stainless steel they they say will uh make an electrolysis and what will happen is is the aluminum and steel will actually eat each other and then eventually these would fall out now I wouldn't use steel at all I, I use stainless steel and the only reason I did this instead of using like an aluminum pop rivet which is what I was originally going to use it'd probably be the better thing to do that way it's aluminum on aluminum and it's a theft deterrent as well but this trailer never sees salt it's not in the winter if I haul anything in the winter I use the enclosed trailer not an open trailer but for a lot of applications on a snowmobile trailer where you're going to be seeing a lot of salt and if it sits outside for you know a long time if it's not stored inside I would highly suggest using like an aluminum rivet or some other way to fasten this on there um, not using you know steel definitely don't use steel or it'd be a better alternative than stainless steel but just wanted to point that out to make sure doesn't give someone a headache down the road so we'll wait till it to get dark and we'll see how bright these are and how they work
All right, guys, I hope this video helped, not only as in uh, ideas on wiring, but <clears throat> just to show how bright these lights are. I really do like these lights. Uh, 20 watt each, which equals 40 total. And there's a, a lot of light in a small package. Um, they're a really bright white. And the other thing I really like about them is they're a really wide flood. So you can, you can really see the, the spread that it gives you for these lights, for backup lights. Um, I think they work perfect. No complaints. I'd buy another set of these and put them on another trailer. So if you guys have an aluminum snowmobile trailer or any kind of a trailer with a box frame like this that can accommodate these lights, uh, I strongly recommend them. Like I said, I'll, I'll put a link in the description below of these if you'd like to order some and check out my other video I did and I'll also uh, put a link below that video of them of the other lights if you guys like them. As always, thanks for watching.